Company accounts don't always have a lot of data about the company that you're interested in. So in this video, I'm going to talk about some other tools that you might use to find information that you need and some other tips for finding stories using Companies House and other resources. In particular, I'll talk about using accounts to find leads for interview features or researching people involved in companies. We've already talked about finding parent companies and other structures and um, some of the more tricky challenges that might need some more advanced search techniques or different websites. I'll start with this example. This is a, a micro company, a um, craft beer company called Clink Beer Limited. And because it's such a small company, it has very little information in the accounts at all. So how can it give us some information that might be useful journalistically? Well, the people involved in this company are still going to be interesting themselves and indeed um, they might be a good interview feature about what it's like to run a craft beer company or a, a small enterprise starting out in your career for example or in your business. Now a good place to look for here is the incorporation um, document on Companies House. You can find this by uh, either scrolling right to the end of the history, the filing history for the company, or just ticking the box that says incorporation at the top, uh, which will filter just down to those documents. And in that document, you'll see the initial shareholdings, the, the people who initially held shares, in other words, created this company. So we can see there are three names here. We can also see how many um, shares they had which gives you an idea of their level of control in the business. In this case, each of these person has one share, each, one share each, so they have equal control, and that's quite common. But if it's a different weighting, then that gives you an idea of the kind of power dynamics of who's more senior or more in control in this organisation. You can also find persons with significant control in an organisation by going to the People tab and clicking on Persons with Significant Control. Now that People tab is quite useful generally, um, as I've explored in previous videos, for finding people with some sort of connection with the business, directors, secretaries, other people in positions of seniority. And for each of those people's names, as again, as I've explored previously, you can click on those names and find out the number of appointments that that person um, has. So again, before you go and interview someone, you can research from using Companies House to find out about their other business connections. And that can give you some good material in terms of your questioning and also help you build a picture of that person's history. Now, one thing to point out is, again, that the information on Companies House is not massively reliable. By way of example, um, this is uh, something that the journalist George Greenwood found on Companies House. Um, Jesus Christ himself listed as the company director of one company. And um, not only that, but they're listed as having the nationality, angelic, and the country of residence, heaven. With the occupation creator. So you can see that, that Companies House really doesn't necessarily kind of moderate or check the information that it receives. Another aspect that might be useful is the ultimate parent company. So um, again, I've touched on this elsewhere, but um, in a different context. In this situation, this is um, there's a couple of points to make here. The first is, we're looking at a website for a, a loans company called Piggy Bank. Now, if you search for Piggy Bank on Companies House, you might not find this company because it's actually the website. Piggy Bank is run by a company called DJS UK Limited. And what you're looking for on the website is their company number, ideally. And it's the company number that leads you better than anything else to the company's presence on Companies House. So when you're looking, to, if, if you're trying to trace websites, look for the sorts of footnotes, copyright notices, um, any sort of, you know, search for website for the, for the phrase company number or registered, things like that, because normally they have to include this and that would lead you to this company. Now this company actually is so small that it has a, 
exempt company accounts. But those company accounts do lead you to the ultimate parent company and that can provide you with more information about how much money it's turning over, who's involved and so on. So again, if a company is very small, then use the ultimate um, controlling party or the ultimate parent company to trace who you might need to speak to or what's actually happening. And when you're dealing with a company, it's worth thinking about those connections. We, we've talked about directors, we've talked about um, subsidiaries and parent companies. Um, you might also be able to find mentions of creditors in the notes or investors. Um, there's the um, associations that that organization belongs to. It might have made donations. So those all help you build a picture of the company and its connections. And again, help you with stories and lines of inquiry in terms of interviews. Not necessarily hard news interviews. These could be soft interviews as well. It just is a good way of getting some background. Now, there are some types of company where you will find nothing on company's house. Um, here's one example, Yorkshire County Cricket Club Limited. The company number for this cricket club begins with IP. And this means it's an industrial and provident company. Um, and they don't have to actually report to Companies House. They're not registered under the Companies Act. They're registered under some other laws. And they submit their uh, accounts essentially to the Financial Conduct Authority. Now, when you come across uh, a company like this, uh, an, an IP, an industrial and provident company, it should link to the mutuals public register. Um, but if not, that's where you need to go anyway. It looks like this and it's at this address and you would search that for the accounts. And it, it's once you're there, it's similar documents again, but sometimes with a bit more information. Another type of company that doesn't have to provide information is a royal charter company. Most universities are royal charter companies. Um, and uh, in this case, you are invited to contact the company direct for further details. Now, of course, in the age of the internet, the company should be publishing its accounts on its website without you having to contact them. So that's the case here with the University of Birmingham. The other thing to consider is whether there's some sort of regulator that collects data on finances as well. In the case of universities, HESA, the Higher Education Statistics Authority, collects financial statements and publishes it on its website. So that saves uh, you a lot of work if you were just dealing with the accounts here. Other useful tools that you can find, I've listed um, Companies House in the first address there and the Charity Commission in the second. Uh, but in addition to those, you have Little Sis, which is a, um, a website that collects information about corporate relationships. You have Open Corporates as well, which is a kind of an open data version of company registers, not just Companies House, but company registers all over the world. You can use open corporates for look for companies in dozens of different countries. And there are some other resources there as well, which provide different sources of information on companies. You can even send an FOI request to HMRC, um, which is the uh, part of uh, the, the organisation that collects taxes and investigates tax evasion. Um, and that link gives you an example of, of um, one of those. While you're a student at the university, you have access to FAME as well, which is a database, a financial database that allows you to search uh, information on companies and directors. And there are some advanced search techniques to point out with open corporates as well. Um, on Companies House now, you can search by address, but it's um, a little bit easier on Open Corporates and you can see in this animated GIF how you do that. The Advanced Search Facility on Open Corporates gives you some uh, particular options that allow you to narrow your search or indeed specify um, just for us. I'm just going to decline this phone call, hold on, <laughs> and carry on. 
Um, trademarks are another route you might try if you're if you're trying to trace an organization you can search for the trademarks that they handle these are sometimes used to move money because you have to pay to use trademarks and you can also filter by industry code if you're interested in a company within a particular sector And Open Corporates also provides some other tools and resources. Uh, for example, it has a Slack group, which is uh, useful if you want to talk about using the tool. It has an API as well, which is especially useful for querying data about companies and, and getting lots of information. Um, I should mention that Companies House also has an API. And Open Corporates provides uh, an investigator's handbook with lots of tips and examples and case studies around investigating companies as well. In the slides for this video, you'll find a further video of a Corporate Investigations Masterclass, and there's another video on reading company reports in the US, in particular by David K. Johnston. Um, so if you're looking at companies that have an American presence, obviously that's a different company registration system, and there are other things to consider there. I've provided a couple of links related to that, um, like the SEC, for example. But um, if you're tracing companies across different uh, countries, then it's worth looking at some of the different types of ways in which data is stored. And like I say, Open Corporates is a very good international resource on that. So to sum up some of the key points from this video, first of all, even if there's nothing in the company accounts themselves, or very little, you can use Companies House to find leads for interview features or to research for people that you are planning or hoping to interview. You can also use these uh, websites to identify parent companies and map for relationships. And always remember that company's house information is not necessarily moderated, so it can be inconsistent and it may be useful to draw on other tools which have different functionality in terms of drilling down into different companies and their features and connections.